Today, I would like to explain how our recent research helps in understanding how the coronavirus replicates its RNA genome and also how it helps to understand how the COVID-19 drug Remdesivir functions. People who develop drugs against COVID-19 use three main strategies. You can either block the entry of the virus to the cells, or you can try and inhibit an enzyme called the protease, which is needed for the virus to make its proteins, or you can try to inhibit the RNA-dependent RNA polymerase enzyme which the virus uses to replicate its genome. We think that uh, inhibition of the polymerase is a promising way forward because when you look into the past, there's many antivirals uh, that are in use to treat patients um, that are polymerase inhibitors, inhibitors of polymerases of other viruses such as hepatitis C or HIV or herpes viruses. So in order to do our research, we had to start with making the coronavirus RNA polymerase. And um, once we had achieved this and we had protein in hands, we had to show that the polymerase is functional in biochemical assays. And this is the assay we used where we have made a synthetic RNA that can be uh, extended by the viral polymerase um, from the three prime end. And here you can see the extension of the RNA by several nucleotides in total 11 nucleotides. And that leads to a, a longer RNA product when you use a polymerase that consists actually of all three uh, subunits that are known, NSP7, NSP8, and NSP12. Now with the polymerase in hands and being functional, we could use a method called cryo-electron microscopy uh, that allowed us to solve the molecular structure of the enzyme in complex with its RNA template and its RNA product. The quality of the data uh, differs depending on which part of the structure you're looking at. So around the active center of the enzyme where the RNA is bound, we have very high resolution. We see all the details. We can visualize different nucleotides in the RNA template, which is shown here in blue and in the RNA product shown here in red. But when you move to the periphery of the structure, for example, these regions out here, you can see that the resolution is lower, there's mobility in the protein and in the nucleic acids, so there's less detail to be observed. Here's a few, an overview of the coronavirus polymerase structure with its different protein subunits, as well as the RNA template product duplex bound to its active center. In green, you see two copies of the NSP8 subunit. And in blue, we have the NSP7 subunit. And then the large subunit called NSP12 is shown in different colors that symbolize its different domains. Here we have visualized in a very simple fashion the process of RNA-dependent RNA replication of the coronavirus genome. And uh, this is simply to give you an idea how the enzyme moves forward along the RNA template, which is shown here in blue, and how it extends the RNA product chain, which is shown here in red. We can see nucleoside triphosphate substrates that enter from the right and bind in the active center of the enzyme where they are added to the growing RNA chain. What is special about this polymerase when you compare it to other viruses? Well, one thing that is uh, very 
special are the so-called sliding poles, as we have called them. These are these long helical extensions of the polymerase, which slide along the exiting RNA product uh, template duplex. And those sliding poles were not of observed for other polymerases of viral um, nature that you see here, for example, the hepatitis C, poliovirus, or norovirus polymerases. They have very similar active centers for RNA synthesis, but they're lacking these sliding poles. And when you go to the literature, you can speculate that these sliding poles are actually used uh, to ensure the replication of the very long RNA genome of the coronaviruses. It's actually uh, amongst the longest, uh, or the, the coronavirus genome is the longest known RNA genome. And that probably um, is the reason why we see these sliding poles, because they can ensure the processivity of the enzyme, which means the polymerase does not fall off the RNA until it has finally uh, reached its goal and completed replication. Now, in order to study how remdesivir actually inhibits the process of coronavirus replication, we joined forces with Claudia Hülbartner's lab at Würzburg, and they were able to incorporate remdesivir into the growing RNA chain of um, our constructs that we use to prepare these enzyme complexes. And um, we could show very nicely that remdesivir um, inhibits uh, coronavirus replication uh, when we made the active form of remdesivir, the triphosphate form that you see here on the left. Uh, what is special is that uh, also the molecule actually resembles adenosine triphosphate, a natural substrate of the reaction. It has here this nitrile group, this CN group attached to the ribose moiety. And uh, this is actually the reason, the presence of that group, why it's an inhibitor of coronavirus replication. So when we did the biochemistry, we used our functional assay, we could see that when you use the four natural uh, nucleoside triphosphate substrates here, A, G, U, and C, we get extension of the RNA all the way to the end, to the plus 11 position. But when you replace ATP by remdesivir triphosphate, um, you get an intermediate accumulating so an intermediate at the position plus four, which means that remdesivir is incorporated and then three more nucleotides incorporated, but then the polymerase will stall, it will pause, and eventually at high concentrations of nucleotides, this stalling can be overcome and the full length RNA product can be obtained. So remdesivir is an inhibitor of RNA elongation but it's not a very strong inhibitor. Eventually, you can overcome the barrier that remdesivir causes. Now, in order to study this structurally, we use those RNAs from the Hülbartner lab. And uh, we included or incorporated a remdesivir uh, residue at position minus three of the product RNA. So this here is position minus one, minus two, minus three. Why did we choose minus three? We wanted to see the state of the enzyme uh, just before the stalling occurs. So now we solve the structure of this uh, RNA protein complex. And what we observed is that we have an active form of the complex remdesivir really occupies the minus three position as designed and we see an empty active site, an empty binding site for the next nucleoside triphosphate substrate. So this is an active state of the enzyme. We can move uh, for forward from here. We can incorporate one more nucleotide exactly as was observed biochemically. 
Now in the next step, we placed remdesivir into a position minus four. So we wanted to see what happens once it's uh, located to uh, position minus four. But what we actually observed when we solved the structure is not what we designed. We observed a different state of the enzyme. We now see remdesivir again is accommodated only at position minus three and not at position minus four as designed. And we also see that the enzyme adopts the pre-translocation state. So now we have a nucleotide, the three prime terminal nucleotide of the RNA occupying the substrate binding site. And um, this actually means that a substrate cannot bind to this site anymore because it's occupied by the end of the RNA chain. Now the question is, why do we observe this different pre-translocated state? Um, the hypothesis was, of course, that remdesivir was not accommodated at position four as designed, and therefore the enzyme had to move and the RNA was shifted out of that position. So in order to prove that, we had to solve another structure. And that structure now is exactly the same. The RNA is exactly the same as before. But now we replaced remdesivir by the natural A residue. And um, then we solved the structure again. And now we saw something very exciting. We saw again what we expected. So the A is accommodated at position 4 minus four, and the enzyme is not in the pre-translocated state anymore. It adopts the post-translocated natural state with the active side again being empty. So this is actually proof that the presence of remdesivir at position minus four is a problem. The enzyme cannot bind stably when remdesivir is at position minus four, and therefore uh, there's this backsliding of the RNA along the enzyme surface and remdesivir is only accommodated at minus three. But when it is accommodated there, then the three prime end of the RNA is blocking uh, entry of the next nucleoside triphosphate substrate because the um, three prime end occupies the substrate binding site. So this actually, actually explains how remdesivir can uh, inhibit the coronavirus polymerase. And this is summarized in this movie here. So remdesivir can be incorporated into the growing RNA chain. Um, and then this can be translocated and there's incorporation of three more nucleotides following remdesivir incorporation. But then the enzyme stalls and this is because the nitrile group of remdesivir that you see here with a blue and a um, pink ball is uh, clashing with the serine side chain uh, 861 in the coronavirus NSP12 subunit. And it's most likely due to this clash that the polymerase has problems to translocate. But as I said before, uh, at high concentrations of substrate, this elongation barrier can be overcome and remdesivir is not a complete inhibitor of elongation, but rather it only causes transient stalling of the enzyme. Uh, and then uh, the enzyme can get over this elongation barrier. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the people who were involved in this work, a fantastic team. Uh, who worked very, very hard during the last year to achieve these results. Hauke Hillen, Christian Dienemann, Goran Kokic, uh, Dmitry Tegunov, and Lukas Farnung. Thank you very much for your attention.